years All right, for four now, years from now. Now that the election is over, Carl, tell us more about all those reports of infighting be between McCain and Palin staffers. Well, I wish I could have told you back at the time, but all of it was put off the record until after the election. There was great concern in the McCain campaign that Sarah Palin lacked a degree of knowledgeability necessary to be a running mate of vice president and a heartbeat away from the presidency. Uh, we are told by folks uh, that she didn't know what countries were in NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, that being Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. We're told that she didn't understand that Africa was a continent rather than uh, a series that a country just in itself. A whole host of questions that caused serious problems about her knowledgeability. Uh, she got very angry at staff, thought that she was mishandled, was particularly angry about the way the Katie Couric interview went. She didn't accept preparation for that interview when the aides say that that was part of the problem and that there were times where she was uh, hard to control emotionally. There's talk of temper tantrums at bad news clippings. To all of this, she says, she doesn't understand how anybody could feel that way. She says she was done everything that was asked of her uh, and she bears no ill will to staff. Uh, notwithstanding that, there is to be an avalanche that will continue for many days now, we're told, of story upon story of the foibles of Sarah Palin. With that said, there is absolutely no denying, Shep, that she has stirred the passions of Republican conservatives, and a lot of them are looking for her in 2012. Many political observers are probably sitting here listening to you say this and, and asking themselves, how could they end up with a running mate who doesn't know that Africa is a continent and they don't know the level of problems that they're getting themselves into in advance. I mean, what happened with the vetting process? Well, the vetting process was truncated. It became very, very quick because McCain and his aides concluded that the then short list wasn't inadequate to, quote, change the game. They, uh, in their own vernacular, had to throw the ball downfield. Translation, Hail Mary. That was what Sarah Palin was. And lest this come across as critical of her vice presidential candidacy, the McCain campaign makes a very interesting point about this in defending her selection. From the moment she was picked until September 15th, John McCain McCain surged into the lead, both in national polls and on the electoral map. On September 15th, Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy, and John McCain said the fundamentals are strong. From that point forward, Barack Obama took the lead and never looked back. You know, I was actually in a meeting last night where we were going before the election, uh, before the election coverage began, we were going over the, the charts of when Barack Obama's numbers actually went up, and the, the, the reading of the polls by our decision team was that, in fact, it didn't start there, but it started four days earlier the day after the, the Palin interview with Katie Couric, that that's when the rise began. And that Katie Couric interview was one that we're told Sarah Palin refused interview preparation for. Uh, they predicted many of the questions. She simply didn't take the time necessary, they thought, to deal with it. Now, McCain, McCain campaign critics of Sarah Palin point out that the questions that Katie Couric asked in their view were not out of bounds. They thought they were fair. The presentation of it in the news, in the news content they thought was snarky, but the fact that she wasn't able to answer the questions was more telling. Her lack of answers was more telling than the questions themselves.